a reading from our small catechism. Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, household, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The beginning of our Exodus verse for today, we find the Jews who had been taken out of Egypt, and we can see kind of their, uh, their mindset, to put it in the, in the best way. Their mindset was, okay, we're free, but now you've brought us out here to die. How is that merciful? How is it merciful that God would bring His chosen people into the desert with no food or provisions, or at least their food and provisions have already been consumed, and now they're grumbling against their pastors, Moses and Aaron. That doesn't make much sense. They are out there in the wilderness and they grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Very second verse. And the whole company of, people, of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died at, by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out of the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So, they're blaming their pastors for the will of the Lord. They're grumbling against their pastors because they were not in the situation that they wanted to be in. They would prefer to be slaves in Egypt, sitting by the meat pots, than to be free by Yahweh in the desert. And how does the Lord answer them? Does He smite them? Consume them? Now, he did send fiery serpents, but in this text, there's no fiery serpents. What does God do for the people who are grumbling against their pastors? The Lord talks to them. He talks directly to Moses and says, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven. B rain bread from heaven. Can you imagine such a thing? And Moses and Aaron, they go to the people of Israel and said, At that evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because He has heard your grumbling against the Lord. And so the great power, the great authority, the very thing that God did to show that He was the Lord was the bringing down from heaven manna. So when the Jews came up in the morning, they would see the small flakes of manna. And they would collect them, and they would eat them, and there would be leftovers, but the leftovers were given back to God, and not kept lest they stank and grew worms, and they ate. They ate meat from quail, and they ate manna from heaven. So when we kind of expect the Lord to punish 
us for our deeds. In this text, He feeds them. He feeds His people whom He loves. Now, you too, you have been sent out. You have been sent out by God into the wilderness of this world. You are born sinful, screaming, and we die sin forgiven and silent. And so how many times do we who are out in the wilderness of the world, particularly in the United States where Christians are becoming not only ir irritating for the secular world, but downright despicable to the, to the uh, pagan, pagan world. And I would not be surprised if in the future there are stonings and killings of Christians. I don't know how far away we are from that. But we are. And so, we who are out in the wilderness, we too grumble against God. We grumble against His pastors. We grumble that we have not the things that we want. Not the things that we want. We don't want, uh, we want meat pots, so to speak. But the Lord. Here's the grumbling, and he gives manna from heaven. So you, each and every one of you, you too are in the desert. You have grumbled against God by sin, and the Lord has convicted you of your sin, and you have repented of your sin right before the, the, right before the liturgy started. And we forgave our sin. God forgave our sins because He is faithful and just. But in this wilderness that we call the world, do you not need rest? Do you not need food, drink, house, home? Do we expect God to provide these things for us? Do we expect God to provide these things for us? It's a sincere question. And the answer is, yes. We do expect God to provide for us all that we need. But is it wrong to expect God to give us what we need? And the answer is no. Because right in the Lord's, pra Lord's Prayer, we can see it. Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? That God gives bread to uh, Christians and evil men alike. Without our prayers, it says. Without our prayers, we are fed. However, in the feeding of the 5,000, we find kind of a different scenario. Christ fed 5,000 people with just a little. A great miracle indeed. I mean, I don't even think that the people knew what was happening. The only people who knew were probably the, the disciples. And so they all ate, passing one, passing the bread, passing the fish. Everyone ate, and they were provided for it. And they had more than they could eat. They had leftovers. They had leftovers. And when we look at this text, we also have to see, particularly in John 6, if we continue on through John 6, you will see that Christ calls Himself the bread of life. Christ says, I am the manna that's come down from heaven. I am the bread. I am the meat. 
I will give you drink from my side, that riven side which flows blood and water. And so the manna that came down from heaven to provide for the Jews and Christ feeding 5,000 that they would not be hungry, it all points to one thing. Behold, the bread that has come down from heaven. You want rest? Behold, the bread that has come down from heaven. You want security? You want peace? Behold, the bread come down from heaven. Do you want forgiveness? Do you want salvation? Behold, the bread come down from heaven. If people knew what we have here at Augustana, these pews would be filled. If people knew that there is Jesus who is the bread of heaven, these pews would be full. Because every single Christian wants to get too closer to Jesus. And you can't get any closer to Jesus than being washed and being fed inside of you. Your heart being forgiven. Your heart being circumcised. Your heart renewed and blessed by the very flesh of the Son of God. Imagine. Just imagine one, for one second that that is Christ. Am I wrong that these pews would be filled if they knew that Jesus was here? I don't think I am. But for you who are here, behold, the Lamb of God, the bread of God, the one who comes down from heaven, forgiving our sins. And when we eat and we drink, we are filled to the brim with forgiveness. So let us not tarry anymore. Let us not gild, gild the lily. Let's eat and let's drink. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.